Before anything else, I just want to say that I am very very sorry to everyone who tried and failed to enter their models into the submission entry that I opened up with my most recent video. In total, almost a hundred different comments were just deleted and sent into the void, and this despite me having enabled as few restrictions as possible for the comment section. And you know, this is due to YouTube censoring policy with not really allowing links in the comments and stuff, but um, anyway. I, I never intended on making a Discord for the channel this early on, but I was kind of forced to because there were no other alternative methods for people to submit their links to me with and um, as such submissions for that video will stay open for another two days after the release of this video but you need to join the discord and submit your links in there if you if you if you want me to see them and um, even if you don't care about the submissions or whatever you can also just join to share and discuss yours and others models if you want to the link will be in the description below but anyway uh, on with the 10 tips so we have here a bit of a bandit who probably deserves to be put down, but unfortunately there's not a lot of poses that allow you to make a character look really dead. I mean, there's this one, but it's like you, you can't in this, the problem with this one is there's no arms or anything you can edit. So while you can edit the upper body a bit like this and you can edit the, the, the shape of the movement of the head, that's not really enough. But um, there is another pose where you can get a similar thing. And with this one, the, the toddler sit, as I like to call it, um, if we move this guy a little bit more into the center now, with this one you'll notice now we can edit the arms so now we could have the arms kind of stiffly lying however we want them to and because we can edit the upper body we can also like kind of twist him down like this and obviously you can't make him lie down completely like the other one and how i would solve this is probably you know you you would like smack down some object for him to lean against or if you have pro you could have him lean into someone someone else's like arms or whatever uh, you can make some cool scenes like that but anyway uh now we could like pose these arms downwards make them like lie limply against the floor and and his his head could be tilted all the way back as well make him look really dead yeah i mean uh, it's it's not perfect but you get the point like there's alternative like dying poses than just the lying down one and i would argue that the toddler sit is a lot more customizable than the prone one so you're making a really badass samurai, right? You know, this guy is going to be super duper cool, but then, oh no, you zoom in and you realize this this doesn't look quite right, does it? The eyes showing on top of this mask. I mean, this set's cool and all, but the, the eyes showing up here can be a bit of a problem for some people. Okay, so there's the mouth area here in gear, and then there's also the mask and clothing. And these, you can make some very cool combinations between these two. For example, the one I'll showcase here is... Disciple of Death mask together with the indomitable samurai mask will create this very cool kind of oni mask It almost looks like they belong together, right? And there's other combinations as well I mean this one isn't too awful either. You can see some clipping here, but personally I kind of like the nose there I think it looks kind of creepy you almost have like a bit of a Michael Myers mask going on uh, there. in the most recent tip video I did I showed people how they could um, how they could enable four arms right and by doing so they could clip one of these arms into the body to put like a metal on but um what i will show you now is just a similar thing but instead of a metal we're gonna do an arrow so let me post this quickly So I, I will be the, the, the first to admit that, uh, you know, this exact positioning is a bit weird because, you know, if you're getting if you're getting impaled by an arrow at this range or in this area, you're probably a pretty dead man. And uh, as you can see, this guy is very, very beefy, you know, but there's something a little bit off and it's, it's the face, right? And until we have the face customizer, we're going to be stuck with, with having these faces, unfortunately. It's a very narrow selection. But what I want to suggest to you today, and and I'm sure a lot of people have, like even people who are new to Hereford probably already utilized this option, but for me at least, when I started, the only faces I would use pretty much was this one, heroic features, noble features, and then heavy features. And if I was going to make a character like this, I'd probably use the heavy features. But to be honest, like, Hero Forge is always going to look cartoony anyway, right? Like, you're not getting away from it, so there's not really any reason not to use some of these really, really weird faces down here. And, like, take, for example, the orcish, orcish features. Now, I never considered using this when I was new to Hero Forge, but in hindsight, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Like, this face has a lot 
a lot of soul to it, and in some ways even more detailed than like these original faces here. And especially some of the beards and mustaches look really, really good on this face because they get kind of stretched out in a weird, funky way. So, for example, I put on this mustache. Yeah, like we're getting like a real, real like Ron Perlman look here. It's not just this face either, but like <laughs> this, this right here. If you're ever making like some kind of mafia gangster. It's uh, <laughs> it can work very well, even though you know it's originally a face for a fairy tale goblin. And my point is, these faces don't have to be used for orcs or fairy tale goblins or or, or or goblinoids or or goblin or hell. There's even the the alien face I've seen people. Oh well, no. I Now, I, I am not a big fan of, of superhero models, or superheroes in general, but um, a tip that... A lot of people, when they try to make, like, superhero models, right, they'll just pick, like, the, the tightest clothes they can find, like, for example, um, like this. And there's nothing wrong with this, I mean, I can see this working for, like, a Captain America character or whatever. But what I'm gonna suggest is actually that you don't put any clothes on at all, but rather that you, um... You use the character's skin as the clothing because superhero costumes that are tend to be like skin tight, right? So you, for example, if, if you're gonna make like a Batman character, you could start by just taking like one one of these kind of gritty grays and you smack it all over the body. And but but this alone isn't quite enough, right? So maybe you want to put this on you, and you make it black. And this is just a decal from the from the chest here. It's called chest blaze. Um, and you can go further with this as well. So let's for example. Instead of going into, we go into the main decal art because we just want a straight line. We take the splatter gradient and now we pull this all the way up and we line it like here, right? That's where it ten, the line tends to go with like Batman. Um, and we make this black as well. And then say we put on some horns at the very back like this. And obviously, yeah, you, you can see what I'm going for. And I have seen people make way, way better Batmans than this. Uh, but this is just a very rushed, quick example showing what you can do with the decals in this. And I wouldn't say this is like limited to uh, like superhero models either. Like you could, you you can do this. You can make this for a lot of models. So if we color this woman's entire upper body like this, and then for example we put on a decal like, oh sorry, now I'm in the clothing session. A decal, and we smacked on something for example like this here. And we just made this decal white, like the normal skin color. And now you'll see there's a bit of an issue here and this. But we can find ways to cover that up. I mean, we can find necklaces, etc. There's very creative different ways you can like hide this, etc. Or draw attention away from it. But the point is, now you, you're kind of making it look like... Look like this, 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 there's a dress top and there's a, a, a very tight dress that's kind of ending here. You know, as a lot of dresses tend to. And then you can, you, you know, you can put on some dress gloves. You can put on some some heels, whatever. So in one of my most recent videos, I included a lot of color packs for how to do things, including a lot of gritty metals. But something that I didn't include was how to do bloody metals. So we have gray steel here, the amount the the color we're using. And if we drag the lower layer into kind of a very dark red like this, and then we also drag the higher layer into a dark red like this. Now on some pieces it looks better than others, right? On these old shoulder pads, it doesn't look quite perfect. However, the highlights are much better accentuated on these new pieces. So this chest piece here, you can kind of see where the scars are on the armor. It looks like there's kind of old faded blood in it. Now, if we also combine this, we say we, we smack on this decal here. And I, uh, in this case, you could just take like a blood color, dried blood here, and you turn it into metal down here instead of skin. And it works. But this is not really how it would look. So what I would do is we have this gray steel that's turned to blood. We copy it. We put it down here again. Or wait, we don't have to put it down yet. But what we do is we make the reds redder, deeper, and the steel a little bit darker, but still the same. And now you see it's a much more faded effect. And you can see it, it's very similar to the rest of the steel. But if I, if I pull this color around, you'll see the difference. And um, you want to make it like using the original color. It's the same as with skin decals, really, like scars. Uh, just duplicating the original color, gray steel, gray steel one, uh, and using it for these decals. 
it, it, it you can see that it was originally the same color by doing it this way and it blends together a lot more nicely and this is how i would always recommend you do if you want to have like really gritty and grimy steel and obviously again it doesn't look perfect with these old models but for a lot of the newer pieces it does it does work very very well this right here is a very funky looking mask and this is something i found on the reddit by someone called capped can't play and um, basically i'll show you how you do this from the start so we have here like a bit of a, a monk character or whatever, I'm, I'm kind of copying Caps Can't Play's uh, po uh, post here. And um, basically what we start is, we pick this blank featureless face. And we take off the, the brows and then we are going to color it. You want to pick a base color first, so you can pick like stone or wood or whatever. I'll take this ancient wood for now. And um, I'll make it a little bit brighter to begin with. So... Now we have here what looks like a very creepy, just blank, slender man face, right? Now, if we want to make this look like a wooden mask, first of all, we need to add some texture to it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to smack down two different types of scars. And now what we're going to do is we copy this original color ancient wood that we're using here. We get a darker version for these lines here, a little bit darker than this. Uh, and then we duplicate the original one again and we get a lighter version like this like this like this now it kind of looks like we're getting cracked highlights here and then for the third decal we're going to put this down we're going to take that lighter color we used for the highlight we put that down now you can see we're getting this kind of grimy like wooden or stone texture almost and now of course for the pierre's the resistance uh <laughs> i'm not going to pretend i can pronounce those kind of words uh, this we swap, we mirror that to that side, and then we put on these two again. And you can see these decals come out very funky when you don't have any any proper face. Anyway, we take this lighter color again, the highlight one, and we put it like this. And now, now you can see what we're going for, right? Because these the, these white highlights make it look like it's kind of crisped open part of parts of this mask so you have two eye holes and this one here because of the scar going down it's kind of been cracked open and i have to say this is very very creative by by Cap can't play um and i mean this isn't the only thing you can do with this kind of like you can turn you can use decals on this blank face to create a lot of different types of masks like i've seen people make like mickey mouses and stuff i mean if you pick like like these these two as eyes yeah now you see we have two two big old black holes here and um let's see if we take off the scar and maybe we put on like this and we we painted this oh no uh, not that like uh yeah no you you, you see you see like we're, we're making all sorts of weird weird stuff but um speaking of decals let's say this uh, monk got really old and he doesn't want to wear a mask anymore um but you know there's something wrong here right yeah the lower half of the face looks pretty old or at least it looks skinny i, I don't know but these blank foreheads and I, I know we'll get the face customizer eventually but it's not here yet so um i'll be the first to admit this technique is not perfect but i will show you how you can do wrinkles in her forge um and you need to find this one here brow face war paint first you want to take the original one and you take a really darkened version of your skin color so in this case i already have this here the the light skin brow that i'm using under over the eyes here we put this down here, down here, and then we take away this one. And then you might be able to see what I'm going for now. Um, I'll put it down again over the top. We take away the original one, or the lowest one, and then we put normal skin over the top here. And now you can see we get these kind of highlights on the floor. This especially looks good if you combine it with some kind of hat that will like sh overshadow it a little bit. So, okay, now that's, that's too much. But like something simple like this. And now if you zoom out a little bit, you're gonna be able to see this slight bit of detail in his forehead. It does make him look older. It does kind of look like wrinkles. It's not ideal, but it's at the moment it's the best we have. If you're the kind of person who really likes trench coats, this next tip might be something for you. And uh, so let's start by smacking on a trench coat on this old this old man here. Like we, we can do this one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove his arms like this. It, this is for, you know, those really edgy, like, you, you know, people who wear coats, but then don't actually have their arms in their sleeves. Yeah, that this is, this is, for, this is for those people. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to enable four arms here, these extra arms. And with these arms, we... Gonna... 
I will show some better post examples of this. Uh, because obviously in this case I am kind of rushing through it for the sake of being able to make this into a video. But you can kind of see what I'm going for, you know. He's now 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 it just looks like he's kind of folded his hands over one another whilst you know standing and looking out over looking down at the the peasants below. Now, one thing that I really, really am looking forward to the face customizer for is the ability to, to portray fat in a character. And um, right now, there's very, very few ways. I mean, we have we have bulbous features, etc. But um, there's not really any way to convey weight. And even the, the body scalers are pretty bad for this. You know, you can pull up or all the way up like this. And you can pull the belly out. And so you can pull out the curves. But if you if you really want, you know, a hecking chonker, then... You don't have a lot of options, but if you go into horns and you go to this option here and the earring loop and you smack this on and you can see I've already colored it with skin here. Uh, and what we do is we twist this one around like this and then we bend it downwards like this and then we up the scale. And now you can kind of see what we're going for here. And I will be the first, again, to admit, this is not perfect. And I've also got the beard enabled here, because if, if you don't have the beard, then you begin to see the lines a lot easier. So it's, it's a lot better if you have a beard. But basically what it looks like is you have a real kind of like extra chin here from all the blubber. Alright, uh, that is it for the tips for now, and um, again, if you want to enter the submission I mentioned for the for the last video, uh, then please do join the Discord, and uh, you're welcome into the Discord regardless. But um, with all that said, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please press like. If you didn't, please press dislike, and goodbye.